everybody, my name's Michelle and this is my channel Sewing Bunny. Thank you for joining me in my video today, which is my April sew along. So if you had seen my plans video for April, I put up a few of the projects that I wanted to sew up and put it up for the vote as to which one you would like to see as the sew along. And the winner of that was the McCall's M7116, which is this one here. <laughs> And I got this um, free actually in Love Sewing Magazine. You can purchase it separately. Um, I think the front cover, I think might like it, might look a little bit different, I think, in the one that you can actually buy that isn't part of the magazine. So don't worry if you look it up and it looks like it's a different picture. Um, so I'm going to be making version A, which is this one here. So it's the little strappy one. And some of the details here, you can see we've got like a little gathering detail along the bust here and around the straps. And then it's a reasonably straightish skirt. Um, I don't think it's got any pockets or anything, but I don't think I want it to have pockets because I think the skirt is actually cut on the bias. Um, so it's gonna be nice and loose and, and flowy. Um, and also it does have a side zip in as well. So um, first things first is I want to check and see what size I want to make. Um, if you're not used to like big four um, patterns, sometimes the sizing, you know, I've I found sometimes it can be absolutely bang on and other times they put so much ease in it. So quite often as well, I do have to grade between sizes. So I'm gonna have a look at the back because it does give the um, measurements for your body and also at the back, uh, and quite unusually, it's actually got finished garment measurements. Quite often um, with these, if they don't have finished garments um, measurements on the back, you have to look at the actual tissue. So I'm having a look for what I think my size would be. So my measurements, I'm a 36 bust, I'm a 30 waist and I'm a 40 hip. So I'm going to first off look for my bust measurement because I always find with dresses, it's always best to go to try and fit along the bust and then adjust the waist and hip. At least that's just how I find it works best for me. So I'm a 36 inch bust. So I'm going to have a look and see what size um, I need to do for that. So where is it on here? It is, oh, it's actually on the top bit up here on this uh a bit here so we've got a 36 inch bust it says that it's a size 14 but then it says for a 14 a waist is 28 and a hip is 38 so if I go up to the size 16 then that's got a bust of 38 a waist of 30 and a hip of 40 so the size 14 bang on for the bust and a size 16 is bang on for the waist and hips so immediately in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to do a 14 and then grade out to a um, 16 on the waist and hips. However, I want to have a look at the finished garment measurements just to make sure. So the finished garment measurements are down the bottom here. So it does say that the measurements of the bust line, finished garment measurements for a size 14 is 42 and a half inches. Now that is quite a lot of ease. However, I'm gonna to have to have a think about that because um, the um, bust and everything does have gathers on there. So it is meant to be a little bit kind of blousy, if you will, kind of like the front. So um, what's that? 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So it's six inches worth of ease around here. So I don't know if I'd necessarily need that much. Um, and then for the waist, it doesn't tell you the finished garment, gar the garment measurements of the waist, which is handy. It does tell you about the hip. So for a size 14, the finished measurements at the hip line is 41 and a half. So that would give me one and a half inches worth of ease. Or for the size 16, 43 and a half. So I'm kind of thinking, well, it is kind of a reasonably sort of straight-ish sort of skirt. So I don't know if I'd actually want maybe a little bit more room around the hips. I don't want it like, you know, kind of fitting too tightly. So actually I'm thinking that might be right for the hip. So the only thing I'm unsure of is the waist. 
I'm going to have a look and see whether the finished waist, waist measurements are on um, these um, pattern pieces. So bear with me. Okay, so I have opened up the tissue uh, to find all the pattern pieces and I have found that the finished garment measurements for the waist is on the skirt front uh, piece. I don't know why they can't just put the finished garment measurements, all of them, on the back of the packet. It's really frustrating because you have to just take out all of these pattern pieces and try and find the one that's got the finished garment measurements on. I don't know why, but hey ho, I found it. <laughs> so on here, um, so yeah, what I was thinking of is um, I wanted to have this, the size 14, I think, on the top, even though it does have six inches worth of ease around the bust. As I mentioned, you've got like lots of the gathers and things, so you will get kind of like that sort of blousy effect at the top. I want it reasonably fitted around the waist. I don't, I want a bit of movement, but I don't want it too big. And then the hips, I am thinking I will have a size 16 because, um, yeah, I think that three inches worth of ease along the hips would be nice because then it would be quite a nice flowing skirt. So the skirt front piece here uh, that I've got, so the size 16 says that for the waist, it would be 35 inches worth of ease. Now for me, I just think that's gonna be far too much. Um, what I tend to do sometimes is if I'm unsure about how much ease I want, I just get the tape measure and I measure what the finished garment measurement is and see how it feels on me. So if I put this around my waist and I find where it says 35 inches, so that's where it says 35 inches. And can you see, that's how much ease it's saying that you'd get. And I'm thinking that is just tons. I don't want it to be that um, loose around the waist. So if I look down to the size 14, that says it's 33 inches worth of ease. So if I go down to 33 inches, there we go. Can you see there? I've got still quite a bit of room around, but that is so much better. So I've got enough room for breathing, eating, moving, absolutely fine for that. So I think that would be a good one. Now the, say, the size down from that would be 31 inches. Now, if I go to 31 inches, now I'm a 30 waist. So I do have room, but I just like, if I you know have a really deep breath, I can feel that my stomach is touching the tape measure. So I'm kind of like, that's not enough ease for me. So 33 inches gives me enough room to move about, feel comfortable. So I think I'm gonna do that. So I am going to cut then a size um, 14 for the bust and the waist. And then for the hips, I'm gonna do a size 16. So I really hope that kind of helps, maybe if you're struggling with the sizing. Um, but yes, I'm now going to get tracing. Um, I do like to trace my patterns, especially when I am grading between sizes and things, just in case for some reason, if um, the finished article doesn't fit me well enough, then I can go back and retrace rather than having to purchase another pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna get doing that and then I will come back to you. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing in regards to grading. So what I've started to do is I've started to trace my line on here. This is the size 14 where I'm uh, drawing. Now I'm gonna line my ruler up to this point here. Can you see this is where it says the waistline? So I'm going to uh, just make sure that that is lined up. Like so. so then I know then that here I need to make sure that at that point I'm at the size 14. But then what I wanna start doing is once I start getting to the hip, which is this bit, and you can tell because there's the finished garment measurements of the hip, so that's telling you that's where the hip line is. I want to go out to the size 16, which is this line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my ruler and what I'm gonna do is, so again, just make sure that you know where the waistline is. So if you want, you can make a little mark here. 
So then I know that is where the waistline is. And then I want to grade out. So I'm going to get my ruler and say, this is the line where I want to do it. This is the marking where the hip is. So I want it to make sure that I hit that line before I get to the hip, because obviously I want it to have enough ease over the, um, the hips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to draw a line from there. So you see that's where the waist is and then draw it down so that it hits here before that level. Um, I'll need both hands so I'll do that and then I'll show you. Okay so I've drawn that line there. So this line just here was the original size 14 and then this is where I've drawn it to then as you can see it's cutting across to the size 16. This is where the hip is so you can see that I have made sure that I'm out to that size 16 before that hip point. So yeah just gives a really nice curve there and then I just carried on tracing the size 16 round that way. So I'll do that for the um, both skirt pieces and uh, yeah the rest of it I'm just going to cut the size 14. My pattern pieces literally just as I was finishing off the doorbell rang and it was my lovely postman <laughs> you may recognize this style box <laughs> this is um, Andrea from beyond the pink door her fabric shop uh, she always sends them out in these gorgeous yellow boxes so uh, yeah I'm gonna open it do you want a sneaky peek <laughs> so there we go got that pink tissue paper Get a little card as well. Oh, I've got a nice cup of tea. A uh, viscose linen. Oh, this, this is um, some cotton canvas and some enzyme wash linen. So exciting, that's just a little sneaky peek there. But yes, you will see it in a fabric haul coming to you soon. <laughs> Can I take my fabrics please, boo boo? Away. Do you like the box? Hello. Did you hear the rustling of boxes? Yeah, is that nice? So Andrea, if you're watching, not only does the box give me joy with the fabric, also Bentley enjoys it as well. 
<laughs> You've made him very happy. <laughs> I need to uh, get on, don't I, Bentley, with my sewing? What am I going to do with you? Hmm? Where should we put you? Should we try and put you over there? How's that? You can stay there if you want. Cats and boxes, eh? <laughs> okay, so back to the sew along, if uh, Bentley isn't too distracting being so cute in that box. <laughs> so I've cut out all of my pattern pieces. So now I need to get ready to cut out the fabric. Now what I do like to do is I do like to check that I've got all the correct pattern pieces. Um, with the big four, with the big four, you do get um, I like a little list here about which ones, um, like which pattern pieces you need. So I'm cutting out version A, so I know that I needed like one to, was it one to five, I think, and then pieces uh, 13 and 14. So I do like to, to double check that I haven't missed out anything. Also, just be careful which ones you need for fabric, which ones you might need for interfacing, etc. So um, all of these pieces are fabric, but this piece here is actually called the guide for elastic. So I need to keep that one separate. I don't want to cut out fabric for that. So I'm going to put that to one side up there. Keep that nice and safe. So uh, let me show you the fabric that I'll be using. So the fabric that I'll be using is this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. This is a viscose and polyester mix. So you've got that real soft, light feeling of viscose, but you don't have the creasiness because it's got the polyester content. It's really, really lovely. And this fabric um, was given to me for free from Felicity Fabrics in exchange for a review. Um, but this has turned into a sew along, so you get a more in-depth review of it. Um, but yeah, just to be clear, this was given to me for free. And this is called Under the Sea Jungle. Um, I do think, though, that this has all sold out. I think um, as soon as I, think I showed it on my um, fabric haul video, I think I checked on the Felicity Fabrics website and it just all gone. So, um, yeah, I don't think they're going to be getting this back in. But isn't it absolutely beautiful? It's just gorgeous. I think it's going to be so nice for this dress. So I've got two metres of it. Um, the pattern does say, I think, that it uses between one and a half to two metres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check before I cut out the fabric. I'm going to see if I'm happy with the skirt length. So just a very simple case of holding the pattern piece up to me to see how long I want the skirt, because I think I might extend the skirt length slightly. I think um, because I'm a little bit taller, I'm five foot eight, I sometimes do have to lengthen things. I mean, it's a nice summer dress, so I don't mind it being a little bit short, but yeah, I don't want it to be too short. It doesn't make me feel comfortable if skirts are that short. Um, so yes, I'm going to just see whether I need to lengthen anything and I'll get cutting out. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure Bentley's going to be happy there for a little while, aren't you? Yeah, you happy? <laughs> okay, I will start cutting this out now.
so that is all of the um, fabric cut out. Um, yeah, I wish my table was just a tiny bit bigger because I'm not sure if you saw when I was cutting the skirt pieces out, I had to cut like some of it out and then have to shift all of the fabric again to um, fit it in. So yeah, it did take a little bit longer to cut out. It's a bit more fiddly. Um, and you may have also seen that I was using a tape measure to measure the grain line. Now, normally if things sit, you know, kind of parallel to the grain line, then, you know, I can kind of eyeball it because I can, you know, match up um, the pattern of the fabric and just make sure that it lines up nicely there. Whereas when things are cut on the bias, I do like to measure just to make sure that it is actually cut on the bias because, yeah, it's much more difficult, I think, just to eyeball that. So I do like to measure. Um, so, yes, now what I'm going to do is, um, oh, actually, yeah, no, just to mention as well, sorry, the skirt, um, I did lengthen it by two inches when I was holding the pattern piece kind of up um, to my waist and, you know, line up the, the waistline. I kind of thought it's going to end up sitting above my knee and that was without the hem. So I thought I'll add on the two inches because then um, I can turn up however much hem I want because ideally I want this to be sitting kind of at my knee. I don't want it to go too high up. So I thought add an, an additional two inches just in case. So um, I've opened up the instructions to have a look and see what they say is the first step. Now with these instructions you just have to remember which version you're cutting out because it does um, tend to go back and forth depending on what version you're doing. So um, just as a little tip if you wanted to you can highlight um, which section you need to do. So for instance we've got like you know for version A, B and C you do this section but then for the bodice you know C and D you've got this section. So it can sometimes get a little bit confusing. So sometimes it's helpful just to maybe highlight which ones you actually need to look at. But the first step for version A, which is the one I'm doing, is uh, to gather the lower edge of the bodice front. So I'm just gonna grab my front bodice piece. So this is my front bodice piece with the wrong side facing up. So I've got the right side facing down. Um, and that is because I need to make some markings on here because you've got to gather um, just under the bust. And we've got on the pattern piece uh, this little dot here. So I just need to make sure that I mark that little dot because um, yeah, it does say gather the lower edge of the bodice front between the small circles. So I need to mark my small circle on this side, flip the pattern piece over to go on this side and mark that little circle. And then I'm going to sew my gathering stitches for that. So what I'm gonna do is when I wanna mark on my pattern, what I tend to do is I grab a pin and where that little hole um, circle is, I kind of do like a like a little pin prick in there just to kind of open it up a little bit. And so then when I lie the piece over, I can get my chalk pen and make a marking there so it kind of transfers through. And then when I'm going to be doing my gathering stitches, I'm going to be sewing two lines. Um, of my longest stitch length. I'm not going to um, back stitch at either end. I'm gonna leave it loose. So just literally go through the machine so that then you can pull on those so you can gather it. But I will show you that once I have done that. Okay, so I've done my gathering stitches. You might just be able to see the two rows at the bottom there. So now what we do is if we pull the ends of the little tails and pull them together, and we'll start seeing, you can see there, that it is starting to gather up. So um, I'm just gonna do a very kind of like loose gather because at some point I presume we're gonna have to end up matching things up. So I'm just going to get it kind of roughly gathered. Um, and then the next step is to attach the front piece 
and the back piece. So if I get the back bodice piece, okay, so I've got my back bodice piece here, but I am still just gonna set that to one side just for a second, because I do need to make another marking on the front bodice. So I'm going to flip it over, again with the wrong side up and the right side down, just because I like to make markings on the wrong side of the fabric, unless it particularly asks you to, you know, to make markings on the right side. So if we have a look at the front bodice piece, so we've already made a mark here for where we were gathering. There's also another dot, a larger dot here. I need to make a marking as well for that but only on one side because that is where the zip is going to be inserted. So what I'm going to do is I think it's the left side. Uh, yes, the left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lie that down um, on this side, make that marking. And then what I'm going to do is get my back bodice piece. And that one I'm going to do uh, right side facing up. Yep, I'll move that out of the way. And then let me just move my front bodice piece. So back bodice piece, right side up. And then front bodice piece is lining up over the top. And then we're lining up these sides. So this one, so you're going to sew all the way down this one. But then this one, what's going to happen there is you're only going to sew to where that dot that you've made is. So because your zip is going to be then inserted in this section at a later time. OK, so I'll get marking and then stitch that in place and then come back to you. section done so I have if I can show you here so I've sewn all along this edge and then on oh, where am I there we go and then on this edge I don't know if you'll be able to see my green dot might just be able to see a green dot I don't know but I've only literally sewn up to that dot and then the rest of that is uh, not sewn up and then um, I have just gathered a little bit of the bodice there okay so now we need just to set that to one side and uh, the next step is to work on the shoulder straps so if I get my shoulder strap pieces OK, so the shoulder strap pieces, what it's asking you to do is actually go to the iron and fold over a quarter of an inch all along the long edges. So the bottom bit and the top bit and then fold it in on itself again. What I'll do is I'll go to the ironing board. I'll take you with me and I'll just kind of give you a little close up bit of that. OK, so I'm at the ironing board, so I'm just going to fold over one of these long end, uh, edges by about a quarter inch. And uh, oh, I'm not doing this very well. There we go. So about a quarter of an inch um, along the bottom. So I'll do that. Now, my fabric's quite bouncy, so you can see where I've pressed it. Um, so I've done that along this bottom edge. Now you need to do exactly the same for the top edge. So there we go. I've now um, pressed the top and bottom uh, sides. So if you're if you're using a viscose or a cotton or something, this will probably press really, really nicely. But I think because of my polyester mix in there, it's very bouncy. So now what I'm going to do is now that I've pressed those two edges, I'm now going to fold it again in on itself. See if I can do this one-handed. So I hope that kind of shows it. So I'm bringing those two 
long edges together. So creating one very thin strap. So then I'm gonna press that. And then after that, we need to take it to the sewing machine and uh, do some top stitching. So there we go. I've put some uh, little clips down to try and keep it down. It does not like to be pressed, this fabric. Um, so yeah, I've kept it all uh, together with these little uh, wonder clips. So um, yeah, I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to do some edge stitching all along this long edge and all along this long edge. And then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've done that now. I've done my row of top stitching on one side and the other. So I hope that shows up well enough there. So I've done that on both straps. So that is uh, those straps done. I had to put on a cardigan, suddenly got a bit chilly. <laughs> so now uh, we've just got to attach those straps now to the back bodice piece. So again, what you want to do is you want to grab your um, back bodice pattern piece and you'll see on here a little square and a little circle. So what it's wanting you to do is to place the straps basically line them up so that they sit kind of in between those two markings. So what you want to do is you want to turn your um, bodice the right way out so you can see that's the front because that's the gathered section and then that's the back. So I'm going to put the back with the fabric facing up. Now I'm going to make my markings on the outside um, or the right side of the fabric because um, the instructions say that I need to attach the strap to the right um, the right side of the fabric. So that's why I want to make my mark on the right side. So again, I'm just going to use a pin just to get those uh, markings done. I'll mark them up and then I think it's just to um, base them in place. So I'll do that and then come back to you. So that is straps fitted onto the back. So uh, the next step now is to um, get the armhole facing pieces. So this is basically just bias binding the um, armholes. So you've got um, this piece here and you can probably see there's like lots of um, circles and squares and things like that. I think it's probably a little bit over complicated having all these little symbols. You do have some double notches and some single notches that you can line up um, with the bodice piece. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to grab each piece and I'm going to fold it right, uh, sorry, wrong sides together. Um, I'm going to try and press that down on both of those. And then what I'm going to do is line up on the armhole. So you know that that's the armhole because that's where the strap is. So you can imagine that at some point it's going to loop over like that. So this is the armhole. And then you just want to uh, line it up and you've got uh, the double notches and the single notch that you can line those up to. So I'm going to get that all prepped and ready and pinned. And then I will show you uh, after I've done that. Also, just to mention, at no point yet has it told me to finish off these side seams yet. Now, I think that it's not going to mention anything. I've had a quick look forward and it doesn't say anything about finishing these um, edges off. So for me, I like to have a nice clean finish. I mean, this fabric is brilliant. It doesn't fray or anything. I probably could just leave it. Um, but I just kind of think, you know, I want this dress to last and just in case, you know, if you get any snag threads or anything. So what I'm going to do is I am going to overlock um, the edges of the seams. So, for instance, on here, you can see um, I've pressed that open. But what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to overlock this section and this section. I'm not going to put them together and overlock both of them. I'm going to do them individually. So I'll show you that as well when I uh, come back. 
Okay, so I've pinned my um, arm facing or bias tape um, into place. So I've done it on the right side of the fabric and then you can see here, this is the um, armhole facing piece or the bias tape. So I've done both of them right sides together. Yep. So I'm hoping that will show that there. And I've lined up the notches along here. So uh, it all fits in nicely. I haven't stretched anything. I've just kind of rested it on. Everything lines up beautifully. So now what I'm gonna do is just sew all the way down there. And then we're gonna fold it to the inside, give it a press and then um, stitch it again. But I'll show you that once I've um, done this first section. So I've uh, done that on both uh, arms now. So I so say this is the armhole section. So this is the bias tape that I have attached. So what I'm going to do now is I just need to trim uh, this seam allowance down a little bit because what we're going to do is this armhole section, we're actually going to flip in on itself. I'll do like some close up on that for you. Um, but yeah, that's the next step I'm going to do. This is what I meant about the overlocking, if you can see there. Sorry, this fabric doesn't press very well, but um, yeah, I've just overlocked either edge of the seam allowance on there. So that'll make it nicer when I fold it back over. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that and then I'll do some close-up bits and show you the next step. Okay, so here is the um, arm facing that I've attached on. So you can probably see the stitching line along here. Might be easier if I flip it the other way so you can see the stitching line. So we've got quite a lot of uh, seam allowance still. So I'm going to trim all of that down, probably by about half on there. So it will be easier to turn this um, facing in. So I'm going to give that a trim and then I will show you the next bit. OK, so I have trimmed that down quite a bit there. Oh, excuse the state of my nails really need to uh, repaint them. <laughs> so you can see we've got a much um, smaller uh, seam. So now what we're going to do is fold um, this onto the inside. I'll just um, use my other hand and then show you. Okay, so here is uh, from the inside. So you want to get this piece and then fold it back on itself. And you want to fold that all along and probably you want to put maybe just a couple of pins in just to secure it. What you can do is um, I usually iron um, first, but this fabric is just so bouncy. It doesn't really like to hold any of the ironing that I've done. So I am just going to um, just pin it in place. But yeah, so you just need to make sure that you've got all of that lined up and pinned. So you can see there that you've got a little bit of this um hanging over just so that it means it falls into the inside. So I really hope that makes sense. So I'm going to stitch along this edge on here and then I'll come back to you and show you the finished result. So here it is roughly pinned in place. So I'm gonna take that to the machine now and uh, do a stitch all along this edge so that it should have a nice finish. There we go, so I hope that shows that I've stitched just there. So this is the, obviously the inside, so you can see it's falling slightly in, and then from the outside, then it just looks like uh, some nice top stitching. So, yeah.
pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna do that now for the other side. So the armhole facings are now done. So you can see that's on the inside and that's on the outside. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, bias binding is not uh, my best skill, but actually this looks quite nice. I think it's because the fabric is just so soft and like buttery. It's just so easy to move around, like it didn't take hardly any effort. So uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. So let's have a look and see what the next step is. Okay, so the next step is to form the casing for the elastic, which I think is on the front and back pieces. So, just get this lined up. Okay, so this is our bodice. I've got the front piece facing me and then this is the back piece. So what we want to do on both sides, so if I move the front piece, the front bodice out of the way, so we've got the back piece, what we want to do is we want to fold over a very small um, section, probably about, I think it was about this, a quarter inch, and then you want to fold it over again. And so then you form this channel, because then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch all along and then you're going to thread the elastic through this section here. So you're forming that channel. So yeah, so fold it down by a quarter inch and then fold it over again to form the casing. And you just need to make sure that you've got at least a quarter of an inch um, channel in there because your elastic that you're going to use is a, is a quarter of an inch that you need to thread through. So you need to make sure that it fits. Okay, I'm going to get that all um, folded and pinned and then I will show you just before I sew. Okay, so I have um, folded over that channel and got it all ready and pinned in place. So this is the back and then that is the front. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along this line here just to secure it in place, ready for when the elastic goes in. So I'll do that now. So there we go, we've created that channel now. So that means we can put the elastic in either end. So I've got my quarter inch elastic. So now I need this piece, which was the um, guide for elastic. So it's wanting you to just measure your elastic against this. I don't know why it's necessarily this thickness, but um, yeah, pop that there. So I'm going to cut two of that. One. Okay, so then we'll just need to thread the elastic through these channels. Now I do have a little tool. Okay, so I'm going to use this, which is a little um, uh, bodkin, I think it's called. So what you do is there's this little slider here and you pull it up and then you can kind of open the little grippy bits and then when you move that slider down it kind of fastens it in place so what it is is you can grab one side of the elastic and then secure it down and then you can thread it through so let's give it a go on this side first There we go. And then I'm just going to pin that in place. Just so that it doesn't move. There we go. Let's even out that elastic a little bit. There 
there we go can you see there it's gathered that up so I've pinned the elastic on either side because what we need to do is we need to anchor the elastic down either side so I'm just going to stitch um, just down these bits here just to secure that in place so then it can do that so I'll do that and I'll do the same for the back okay so yeah the elastic is now secure in those bits so uh, yeah, when I was feeding one through, as I was going to sew it, I lost grip of it and it pinged back in. So <laughs> make sure it's nice and secure. <laughs> okay, so there we go. All right, and uh, I think the next step is actually attaching the straps. So let's have a look. Yeah, so the next step, um, sorry for all the sunlight, I hope you'll be able to see, but it is just to attach the straps. So you've got the strap at the back here and then all you're going to do is just attach it to the front. So all I'm going to do is, um, this is obviously the back piece here, is I'm just going to rest it along here and then I'm going to stitch it in place. So I hope that that uh, makes sense there. Um, and it does say that you can um, adjust it. So I'm going to pin it, try it on, um, just to make sure that the straps are um, the right length and uh, then I'll come back to you. So uh, Misty's just come to uh, join me. She's uh, enjoying a bit of the sunshine. So what I've done is I've just clipped um, where I want the straps. So I've tried it on. They are really long straps. So I've got quite a lot of excess on there because yeah, when I, was, when I tried it on, I thought, oh no, is it too big for me? Um, but actually, if I just adjusted the straps, it actually ended up fitting really nicely. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave them clipped on until I've actually finished the dress. Because I think I'd like to just make sure that once the skirt is attached and I try the dress on as a whole, that I am 100% happy with where the straps are. I... <laughs> that's misty going out um i just kind of think if i secure it now and i haven't actually tried the whole um dress on as a whole it's only literally the top half and because it sits quite high up i just want to kind of see how it all fits just to make sure i've got them 100 percent. so i hope that makes sense so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave it there for today i'll carry on with it tomorrow and uh, yeah, I think we've just got the skirt section to go and inserting the zip. Okay, I will speak to you all soon. <laughs> okay, bye. Hi everyone, welcome to day two of the sew along. So I left you last time with the bodice that I just managed to get finished off and um, I've clipped the straps in place ready for when I want to try on the full dress. So the next step in the instructions is now to get the skirt ready for attaching to the bodice. So it is saying that um, you should put the skirts um, right sides together and sew up either end but leaving a gap for the zip. So what I'm going to do first off though, because it doesn't say anything about finishing the seams and I want to make sure that I get either side of those seams nicely finished. So what I am going to do, I'll show you the um, skirt piece, is I'm going to overlock um, all the way down both sides of each skirt piece. And then also you may notice here that there is a little uh, circle. That is um, the little circle which uh, tells you to stop stitching um, up to that point because the zip is actually going to get inserted in this area. So I am going to make sure that I mark that on the reverse of my fabric on both skirt pieces. Also, what I like to do just to make sure that I don't get myself confused is I always mark the front skirt piece. Um, so this is the front skirt. So what I will do is I'll open out my front skirt piece and just simply I like to put in a pin just kind of along the hem. So just add in, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see there, just one little pin and it just means that then I know if I'm working with both skirt pieces which one is the front skirt and I'll see the one that's the back skirt doesn't have a pin in. 
just quite a little simple method that I use. Right, so I'm gonna get on with overlocking either side and then um, I'll be putting right sides together and sewing up, but I will get, I'll show you at that, at that stage. <laughs> So I've overlocked um, both uh, edges of the skirt and pinned it right sides together. I realised that when I was making my markings, I accidentally did it where I created one marking on one side of the skirt and then on the other, other side, it was this side. So um, I just had to go back and remark that quickly. <laughs> so um, yes, now what I've got is I've got um, the back piece here and this bit is the front skirt. So again, I can tell because this section, it doesn't have my pin at the bottom, the other side does. Also the front skirt does go up slightly over the back skirt. So this is what the illustration is showing. It's saying that this is the back skirt piece that you need and that here is where the zip will be inserted. So I put a pin in where I've marked it. Uh, what I tend to do is I put a pin um, horizontally in and then all of my other pins go in vertically so that then I know that's where I need to start sewing. So yeah this bit is just going to be left open to put the zip in. So now what I'm going to do is go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch down from this point all the way down and then this side all the way down the whole length of the skirt. So I'll come back to you once I've done that. So I have now sewn the side seams but obviously left that gap for the zip to go in. So the instructions are now saying yeah, to pin the bodice to the skirt right sides together. So let's turn this the right way out. Okay so now I'm just going to check that yet yeah, my pin is in this bit so this is the front of the skirt. Now I'm going to grab my bodice off the mannequin and I'm going to turn that inside out because we need to do right sides together. So let's turn that inside out. I just want to make sure I'm careful because I don't want to disrupt the um, clip placement. Okay, so I know this is the front side of my bodice because this is where the gathering is. The back part of the bodice doesn't have any gathers. So then what I want to do is I want to tuck the skirt into the front of the bodice. So I hope you can see that there. So I've turned the bodice inside out. The skirt is right side out. I'm going to tuck the skirt through the bodice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up those uh, side seams. Okay, so I've lined up the side seams and I will try and show you what I've done here. So for the side that doesn't have the zip, I have just um, found the centre seam on both sides, lined that up and pinned it. And then on the side that has the zip in, what I've done is I've lined up both sets of um, the edges, <laughs> trying to get my words out there, uh, of the edges. So in theory, if you were to bring those together, then you would get the full um, seam there. But because we're going to be inserting the zip, I've just pinned these sections individually just for the time being. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the back and just pin all of that. And then for the front, we've got 
all of these gathers at the front. So what I need to do is when I'm lining it up, I just need to make sure that the gathers are tight enough for it to be nice and flush with everything. So I'll do all of that, get pinning, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I have now pinned the whole way around. So I've adjusted my gathers to make sure that it fits nicely against the skirt and then also pinned the back as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all the way around. Now remember that these sections are still separate. So I'm going to start on one side and then go all the way around and then obviously stop that side because we still need that bit open for the zip. So I'm going to do that. And then it does say that to over the gathers to sew another line of stitching. I think that's just to kind of reinforce it. So it's to sew your standard um, 1.5 centimetres and then I think it's then something like six millimetres or something on there. So just to secure it. What I will do as well is once I have sewn around it, reinforce the gathers, I will also overlock as well because again, I want a nice clean edge. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you and show you uh, once I've done that. So I just wanted to give you guys a close up of my stitching. Can you see here, I have actually sewn in the middle of my gathering stitches. So you can see that brown thread is my uh, thread. And then, <laughs> yes, hello, Misty. Um, and um, okay, that's not helpful. So the reason why I've done that is just because I find that um, it gives the uh, most even gathers just from my personal experience. I know other people have their own ways of doing it. But what I'll need to do is now, um, if I just turn this out, sorry if you can hear purring. <laughs> uh, you can see here, this is my gathering stitch line. I'm just going to unpick this. It's very easy to do because they're very wide um, stitch length so it doesn't take hardly any time at all but I just find that it gives a really nice even gather yes thanks Misty okay right yes sewing tutorials with cats always very very fun yes okay so I'm just coming back to you because I've just unpicked my gathering um, stitches and everything. And um, I was just gonna go back over again um, and overlock it, but I thought I'll just quickly pop it on just to make sure that, you know, everything's all right. Um, I don't wanna start overlocking and then find, you know, that I don't know, it didn't fit or something. And when I tried it on, I have to admit, I thought, oh, actually, I wonder if I can get away with popping this on without putting a zip in. So what I've done is I have clipped um, all along the edge where the zip um, would go. I've done like the um, 1.5 centimetre seam allowance kind of on the inside so that I would know if it was definitely going to fit. And I popped it on and it fits. <laughs> so I don't actually need to insert a zip. How good is that? So... Um, I'm very sorry for anyone that wanted to see kind of the zip insertion um, section, but I mean, I, I could put it in, but I just, if I don't have to put a zip in, then, you know, I don't have to put a zip in. So um, I have done a, um, in my Portobello trouser so long, I have shown you how to do an invisible zip in that. What I'll do is I'll pop a timestamp to that and that video in the description box below. So if you do want to see how I inserted the invisible zip, then go ahead and do that. This dress pattern calls for a standard zip and they do have instructions in here as to how to do it. I didn't want to do a standard zip. So my zip that I purchased was an invisible zip. So um, yeah, I hopefully I can use that for another project at some point. Um, but yeah, you don't have to insert a zip, even better. So I would recommend if you're giving this pattern a go, 
just try, you know, pinning it or clipping it. I tend to use clips because pins can obviously jam in your skin, which isn't very good. Um, and just try it just to see whether you can get it on over your head. I would say probably if you're quite busty, then, you know, it might be a baby a bit difficult. But, you know, I'm kind of like a, a B cup. So, um, yeah, I managed to get it on over my head. No problem. So, yeah. I'm so pleased I don't have to insert a zip. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to then finish off where I was before. Um, I'm going to overlock all of the inside um, where the uh, I've joined the skirt and the bodice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then close up this side seam. Um, yeah, so once I've done that, I will come back to you. stitched around again to reinforce um, those stitches around the gathering um, just to make sure that the skirt and the bodice are extra secure. Um, I thought what I should do is actually sew the side seam and then overlock it but actually I found out that when I did that because the edges on the side were separate it would just mean that it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get right to the end so I did have to unpick it a little bit then do the overlocking and then finish off the side seam. So um, yeah, if you are doing the same as me, then yeah, do the overlocking and then do the side seam. <laughs> uh, so I've done that now, so it's all joined up. I'm just gonna give it a press just to make sure that that seam is sitting down at the skirt and that all the side skirt pieces are nice and uh, open on the seams as well. And then what I'm gonna do is then attach the straps. So um, that I can just quickly um, whiz over quickly on the sewing machine and uh, then I will come back to you. Okay so that is all done. Um, I've attached the straps and everything and also just off camera I did add in a little me made label and how I attached that was that I just put some wonder tape on the reverse of the label, stuck it where I wanted to and just top stitched it. Now of course you will see the top stitching on the reverse but because of my print you can't see it. Um, if you had maybe like a plain fabric, then you know, you might maybe notice it. But I um, I like where the label sits. I kind of like labels to sit kind of quite central. I don't mind the ones that kind of stick up at the top, but I find they can sometimes flap up. So I quite like that one there. I think it looks really nice. Um, also with the straps, um, I did have to take off quite a chunk in the end. Um, if you can see there, that's about 12 centimetres that I took off. You may find that it's quite baggy, kind of underneath the armholes. Um, so I just shortened mine until that bagginess disappeared. So um, yeah, it fits really, really nicely. I'm so pleased with it. Um, one thing that the instructions don't say, because the next step is hemming. This is a bias cut skirt, which actually means that in theory, you should really let it hang for a couple of days because if it sits on the bias then it can actually grow and if you hem it now and then you know left it in your wardrobe for a few days you may find then when you pop it on your hem might be a bit wibbly wobbly so um, what I'm going to do is I am going to actually let mine hang for a few days and then hem it I'm just going to do a simple double fold at the bottom or if you wanted to, you could overlock and then do a single fold. I just prefer a double fold with a slightly lighter weight fabrics, just because I find that it kind of gives the hem a tiny little bit more weight. So, you know, it's not so, you know, blowing up in the wind. I mean, we're only talking, you know, a, a minor amount, but I just like to double hem um, kind of quite lightweight fabrics. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will pop it on now so you can see what it looks like and I will do some twirls and things as well. Okay, so here it is. I love it. I absolutely love this dress. I love the fabric so much. Just absolutely screams summer to me. Just all these beautiful colours and um, yeah, I just think with a tan, it's going to look so nice. I love this little gathering effect. So it's all stretchy here and stretchy at the back and then you've got the gathers that sit just under the bust. And then the skirt, It's um, I'm so glad that I did go for the grading at the hips because yeah, it just gives a slight swishy effect. I love it. <laughs> I'll just turn around as well. There we go. I am wearing a strapless bra with this because with um, my normal bra, it kind of it, it's okay at the front, but at the back you kind of can see the straps a bit. So I think I will wear this with a strapless bra. So as for the hem, I'm going to hem that in a few days' time just to see if it does drop. But what I will do is I will insert some twirls and things for you but I wouldn't have hemmed it because I'm going to go outside in the garden now uh, because the sun's out um, and do some twirls and I don't know when you know if I wait and then hem it when I'll be able to then film the twirls and I want to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible so you may just have to overlook the hem slightly imagine it about one inch uh, shorter um, when I'm doing the twirls but yeah, overall, um, I think this is an absolute brilliant pattern. I absolutely love it. And um, yeah, I think I will maybe try maybe one of the other versions, but I'm so glad that I did go for this version. I mean, it says that it's easy. So what I would say is, I would say it's, it is easy if you are, you know, um, like used to sewing um, dresses and things, you know, if you're an absolute beginner, you may find it maybe a little bit challenging just because you've got quite a lot of like thin little straps. It can be a little bit fiddly, you know, kind of going through the sewing machine. Um, you do have to insert a zip. Obviously, if you like me, if you can't get it over your head, um, then you will need to insert a zip. But um, if you've made, you know, dresses before, you know, you've made a few things, then yeah, do you know what? It's actually not too bad. I didn't get stuck at any point um so i think it's actually a really really good pattern and i love it and i really want to make another one <laughs> okay so um i really hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already then please do because it's just lovely to have you here with me and um yeah i will speak to you all in my next video okay take care everybody Bye.